Welcome to K1P1 TV. My name is Ruth Herring and today I'm going to show you how to darn in the, your tail ends um, when working the intarsia technique. Now you've probably already seen the way to make intarsia so it's where we join in and then twist the colours around each other rather than taking the colours over the back like we would if we were doing fair isle or jacquard. Now with intarsia what you do end up with um, obviously a very flat surface but you do end up with lots of ends where you have to join in the colour and then cut the colour off once you've finished with it for each section. So let's turn to the back and see what sort of a mess we end up with. Okay so we end up with lots and lots of tail ends that we have to get rid of. Now I've started neatening some of these off at the back here and here but I, you can see I've still got quite a few to do. Now my preferred piece of equipment is a very sharp darning needle with a big eye for doing this and I'll just show you now how to darn off the ends. Now I am really stingy with my yarn so I tend to use very small tail ends so not long enough to actually thread my needle and, and then get my needle into place. So what I tend to do is weave my needle in first. So this is if your end is very short. So when I weave my needle in, I'm going through the floats where I've twisted the yarns around each other. Okay, so that's about a good length to weave in. Then I'm going to thread up my tail end through my needle end, okay, and then pull this through. Okay, before we go any further, you see I've pulled it through a bit too much. So after you've pulled it through, just jiggle it, just to bring it flat again. And then once you've done that, you can then weave your needle back down through those floats, thread the needle up once again and then pull through. This time I'm keeping my thumb there, being really careful that I don't gather the fabric up. Drop my needle just for a second and take a very sharp pair of scissors and just trim the end off. Okay, so now we can continue darning in all the ends and what I would do with this one is darn it over the top to secure it. But just a word of warning, don't darn too many over the top of each other because you'll end up with a very, very thick seam. Oh, that was tricky to thread up with one hand. There we go, and I'm going to pull that one through. Again, just jiggle to flatten it out and then just take it back a few stitches just to fasten it off. If your end splits like that, just moisten your fingers and twist it and then it should, should go through. There we go. And then you can pull it through and trim the tail end. Okay, now when we're darning in our tail ends, um, for instance this tail end here, if you darn down here you're going to open up a hole there. So I always darn in an upwards position first to close the hole. So here I would actually start and weave in from the top downwards. So each tail end that you're going to darn in, just sort of analyse it a little bit and make sure that you're not going to be forcing holes open because then you'd end up with a very messy piece of work. So we'll darn that one in. When I'm doing this type of work, I tend to set myself targets with colours because it can get a little bit boring, although once it's all darned in and ready to go, it 
looks fantastic and then it can be pressed really neatly with some steam take that one off okay I'm going to leave you now and I'm going to continue darning in all my tail ends and hopefully finish my sweater very soon I hope you found that useful thank you for watching K1P1 TV and have a look at the channel um, you'll find other instructions for other knitting techniques including Intarsia or visit our website k1p1.com mm -hmm.